Our speaker today is Elma Phillips. She's one of our Association for Near-Death Studies speakers. She spoke yesterday morning and afternoon at our monthly meeting at the ARE. In Virginia Beach, we're blessed to have a great many excellent local speakers, but a few times a year, we like to reach out beyond our local group and bring in a speaker from the national circuit. And today is one of those days. Alma comes to us from Las Vegas, Nevada, but she spends so much time on the road doing workshops and lectures. She also has a base of operations here in Virginia Beach and in Pittsburgh. Alma is a strong intuitive and is a professional metaphysical speaker on a wide variety of subjects. It's so wide, I really have no idea what she's going to tell us today, but I know it'll be great. Alma Phillips. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to tell you either. <laughs> I ask every day of my life, how can I be of great service to myself, my community, and the universe? And then I listen. People say, oh, I could never share. I could never get up in front of somebody and teach or speak. I wouldn't know what to say. I say, yeah, I don't either. Quite frankly, I don't want to talk. Because if I start talking to you, it's going to be out of my intellect. My beliefs, my confusion. Junk that has no value except to confuse me and keep me from going where I want to go in life. I ask that the universe speak through me. And that no matter what words come out of me, those people listening will get what they need. Have you ever had an experience where you heard someone speak and say something, and you go back and try to find that, like in the book, and it's not there. How did that happen? Or people will come up to me and say, you know when you said this? I said, I didn't say that. They say, yeah, you did. I said, there's something going on here beyond the physical. You ever pick up say something as common as the Christian Bible and read something in there and say, you know, that wasn't in there. I've been reading this Bible for 60 years. That was not in there. When did they put that in there? Have you had this experience? Do you know what I'm talking about? What is it Wayne Dyer that said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. When my consciousness rises, when I have a greater thought, my perspective will not be the same. It can't be. I'm not even the same person I was yesterday. That's what Alice said, right? She said, I could start at the beginning, but I'm not the same girl I was yesterday. Who am I today? I was thinking this morning, what my thoughts were. I was just sitting here this morning, I was thinking about wasting. The things we talk about waste. Don't waste water. Don't waste food. Yeah, I was born in the 50s. Wasting food was the most horrific thing you could do. There was children in China starving to death. Our mothers were going to wrap up those leftover potatoes and ship them across the world to save Chinese children, right? We all know. I mean, we, you guys know what I'm talking about. We have three things, or I have three things, at least this morning I was thinking about, that I've been wasting, and I'm done with it. I have free will. I have an unlimited free will. I have wasted a terrible amount of that in my life. For all the times I was afraid to step onto the dance floor because I couldn't dance. For all the times I was sure somebody had something that I didn't have. For all the things I longed to do and I wasted it. I have free will. Do you know how freaking big that is? I've been wasting it. I won't be wasting that this year. I'll be doing exactly what I want, when I want to do it, the way I want to do it. That's my declaration. I have a friend who recently found out that she had breast cancer. So she was moving forward with the medical treatment on this breast cancer to have a double mastectomy and so forth. And I said, have you considered any holistic healing? 
meditation, I don't know, Reiki, anything? She said, well, I have, but I'm going to save that for chemotherapy. My head, you know that healing and energy is unlimited. There's enough for both. She said, well, I'm saving it for that. So what am I doing in this conversation? I need to get out of here. People say, I want to eliminate negativity from my life. I'm not going to be around negative people anymore. I'll tell you what, fastest way to do that, raise your vibration. Negative things will fall away. When people get too positive, other people go, get away from me. You're just too cheerful. <laughs> You're always happy. Things come so easy to you. I'm going over here. I'm going to go over here in this vibration over here where other people resonate with my lack, my limitation. I'm going to have to leave you alone. I've left a lot of people behind. It hurts sometimes. I was sad to see people that didn't want to take the next step. In my life, I've contemplated a lot of things I really wanted to understand. I have battled with faith. I tell you, me and faith did about 20 years, round for round for round for round. Couldn't figure out who to have faith in, or what to put faith in, or what faith was, or how faith worked. Or I just... Somebody help me out with this. And I would ask and I would cry and I would try this and cry and fall down and get back up. That's what I've mastered in this life, keeping on going. I will get back up. Are you familiar with Indiana Jones? Most of you guys are older. You probably remember the trilogy or whatever it was. They called it trilogies back then. But Indiana Jones, and I, uh, it's where he goes to seek the Holy Grail. And he has to do the, the tenets of the Bible. He kneels, he does these different things to get through the obstacles to get to the grail. Right? I asked my guidance to show me what does faith look like. And they showed me Indiana Jones standing beside the abyss and he puts his foot out like this. And he kind of, I think he like winces. You know, he's, he's quite fun that way. You know, he kind of goes, ah! And the floor appears beneath, beneath his foot. Do you remember that picture? That's faith. Faith only works when you move towards what you want. The floor cannot appear below your foot unless you step out there. Faith Another unlimited resource. We worry about wasting water and coal and oil and all this other stuff. None of us. You ever lay awake and go, we're wasting our faith. Maybe you ought to be. What are you doing with your faith? You have an unlimited amount of faith at your disposal. What the heck are you doing with it? used to covet other people, be jealous of them. I would see someone like me standing up in front of this room and go, oh my God, what I wouldn't do to be up there. And they'd say, this person's been in Las Vegas. She just popped into Virginia Beach. She's going to speak. She moves around the world. She travels and does stuff. I'd go, oh my God, I want to be her. I said, she must have money. She must have a pension. Her parents left her money. People like her better. She must have a really beautiful spirit. She must have like all of her bills paid for. She must have all these things. She has nice hair. I said, God, I want what she has. You know what she had I didn't have? Faith. Turns out she didn't have any money either. She didn't have better friends than me. She had more faith. I asked my daughter this morning, I said, what do I speak on today? She said, well, there's always faith. It's one of my favorites. She said, 
People have asked you yesterday. She said, I heard someone ask you yesterday. This happened. One of her friends said, what are you doing? And I said, well, no, I guess I've been living on faith more than I ever have in my entire life the last three months. I have an unlimited amount of faith. What am I going to do with that? I asked another friend of mine the other day. I said, uh, oh, I said something. Hey, you're in Las Vegas. Let's go to the strip for New Year's Eve. Hey, this is the place to be. People pay a lot of money to come to Vegas to be on that strip. He said, no, I don't even like Las Vegas. I said, what are you doing here? She said, I have no choice. I said, really? She said, well, you know, Florida, it's too wet, and they have hurricanes there. And the East Coast, those people, I just don't like them. She said, the Midwest... It's just boring there. Minnesota and Michigan, it's cold. Texas has terrible politics. I kid you not, she went through all 50 states. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you that somewhere about the 20th state, I had this look on my face. I said, holy crap, how did I get in this place? Finally I said, okay, okay, where, where, where do you want to be? Because, quite frankly, I'm kind of a all-or-nothing kind of person. If you don't want to be anywhere, get the hell off the earth and get out of my way. <laughs> what are you doing here? If you really you have free will, you don't want to be here. Get out. Go get another life. My guidance told me in 2010, I was in a meditation, and they said, you have completed your life task. They said you have two choices. Get off the earth, get a new body, come back in. Stay in this body, get a new life. Tell you what, that was pretty panic inspiring for me. I was like, oh my God. What? Decided to hang around. I'm an eternal being. I've been on this earth so many times. There are earthbound souls, talks about them in the Bible. You know those earthbound souls? Those are souls that are so afraid to leave the earth that they're just holding on to this energy going stuck here. Some of them for hundreds of years. Stuck in fear. Stuck in vows. Stuck in old crap. Seriously? You could go into the light. Yeah. Hold on to regret. That's a great one. If you don't like it here, get off. There's a whole universe out. I was in a meditation one time. It was the most fabulous meditation. Sometimes you just have the most awesome experiences of meditation. So I told my mentor, I said, I had the best meditation. I've been trying to get back there. For two weeks, I've been trying to go back in this meditation to where I was before. She looks at me and she goes, why the hell would you want to go back to some place you've already been? I said, because it was really cool. She goes, well, if it was really cool, think about how much more cooler stuff there is out there. Quit going back. If you don't like it here, get out. Finally, that person said, well, I'd like to be in California. I said, let's help you back. <laughs> I'm not doing anything this afternoon. <laughs> she said, I can't go to California. Really? She said, I can't afford to be there. Well, you about got that all sewed up now, don't you? I'll be leaving now because I don't know what to do with this conversation. I'm learning to use all of my faith. I'm learning to use all of my free will. Thank you for reminding me of where I used to be and where I'm not going back to. Thank you. If you don't have the faith, the courage, the honesty to move forward, get someone to push you. Get prepared. I used to talk about getting prepared. I told my kids at the time they were about 20 years old, they said, get a passport. They said, why, are we going somewhere? I said, I don't know. But if someone comes up to you and gives you a free ticket to the universe, and you can't go because you don't got a passport, I don't want to hear any whining. 
I told that story for two years. You know, my cousin called me. She said, you will not believe what happened. She said, my sister called me. She's buying me a round-trip ticket to Australia. We leave next week. You know what I don't have? A passport. <laughs> she said, I thought I was going to smack you if I heard that story one more time. She said, I'm taking three days off from work, going to get me a passport and get back so I can go to Australia. Get prepared. When the universe hands you what you want, what you've been asking for, be prepared. Don't have some excuse about, well, I got the cat to take care of. No one to babysit it. I mean, don't come up with this crap. When it comes to you, hand it to you. Take it. I was sharing yesterday about aging. I used to get really, really cranked up because they kept giving me senior citizen discounts before, number one, I was eligible. <laughs> oh, boy, did that get me tipped. Now they could crank me up and ruin my day like them giving me 60 cents off of Farm Fresh. It's like, seriously, yesterday I bought a 12-pack of Corona and you carded me. <laughs> because this is kind of how it started was there was a young, you know how you get older, people keep getting younger. There was a young little thing at the, behind the scenes. She says, ma'am, I gave you your senior citizen discount. I gave you a discount. I said, discount? Discount for what? Your senior citizen discount. I almost had a panic attack right there in the store. I was only 49 years old. I said, what? You don't card for shit like that? Oh, I was upset. Well, this went on and it went on and it went on. Day after day and week after week, I would get the senior citizen discount. You know, I said, Franklin, I actually told one of the girls one day, I said, Franklin, coming in here, and having you tell me how old I look is not worth that buck 20. You can keep it. In fact, if you quit this, I'll pay you more. But stop it. Oh, I got so twisted and cranked up over the senior citizen discount. Man, I just went, oh, rage and go on about this. Finally, one time, I ended up in tears over this. I go home, I'm just in tears. I started talking to my angels. I said, you've got to help me with this. What the heck is going on? They said, well, number one, you've never been this old in a physical body before. They said, you've been on this life millions of times on this earth, but you keep getting yourself killed off or something before it's time. You never get to get old. They said, you have no experience at age. <laughs> now, Knowing my personality, I can see where I might have done that a couple of times. They had shown me before that I had martyred myself many times. Like, you want to get to them, you're going to have to go through me. They go, okay. Hey. That'd be another lifetime. And what my guidance said to me is, you see how much more valuable you are in the flesh. You can work to help and assist people when you have a body. Once you lose that body and you hang around on the earth, you ain't nothing but dead weight interfering with somebody else. So they said, no, you've never been old before. This is how it goes. I said, all right. So finally I got over there. The second thing they said about it was, you know, you ask about abundance and you want these things in your life, and when we send you 60 cents just for being who you are, you keep trying to send it back. <laughs> they said, here's one little way that you keep shutting down the very thing you're asking for. I said, wow. I'm okay now with that senior system discount. I'm okay with it. It took me a while though. Like eight years. Eight years to get over a 60 cent discount. The crap I won't get involved in. I must have been wasting a lot of faith there, huh? Wasting a lot of free will. I'm going to tell you the third thing that you have, that I have, and that we all have, in an unlimited potential. And I'm going to guess that a lot of you are wasting it. I used to try to understand and ask, what is this thing called grace? 
I've asked that. I've read about it. I've prayed about it. I want to know what grace is. This is my definition. I'm going to tell you before I even tell you what my definition is. You probably won't see this in any books. Grace is that thing that covers my ass when my intentions are good and my desires are pure. Go out there and do something. Faith is a thing of action. Faith is not so much a noun as a verb. If you desire something, go for it. If you have a wish, move on it. Get prepared. Sell your house. Get rid of that crap you're hoarding. Get rid of those old memories. Let it go. Get prepared. And then take that action step of faith. Do something you want to do. Can you be honest enough to admit something you want? That was a really hard thing for me, was admitting sometimes what I truly wanted. Not only the people out there, but myself. Because I knew I couldn't have it. Because I was missing something, you know. I didn't have what these other people had. So it's better not to get hurt. Not better, better to not admit honestly what I want. I'll just pretend that little niggle down there isn't niggling. I bet some of you are very good at shutting up that niggle because you ain't got something, right? You're missing something. The only thing you're missing is the ability to use your unlimited potential of free will faith and grace. If I know what I want and I start moving towards it, I'm going to tell you a secret too. You know, um, I used to want to know how to do something. I go, well, this is, it's time of the year where you start making goals or something. I go, well, you know, I can't do that thing because I don't know how to do it. I'm going to tell you what, if you know what you want, you know when you want it. You know where you want it. And you know what you're going to get out of that as far as fulfillment in your life. The who is none of your damn business. Or the how, I'm sorry. The how is none of your business. That's where faith comes in. It took me until probably two years ago to understand the how is not my business. That's the universe's business. That's God's business. I get prepared. I tell you what I want, universe. I get prepared. I'm ready to go. I just every day get up and act today like me. And the how will come to me. Somebody said, how'd you get to Las Vegas? I said, my angels told me to go there. They said, really? I said, yeah. I said, going to Las Vegas. I said, really? Hmm? When am I going? I said, you don't know. I've been in Las Vegas for three months. And I still don't know what I'm doing there. The universe seems to be okay with it. Keeps giving me everything I need. This year, I will be using all of my free will. I'll be using all of my faith. And I'm going to gobble up that grace. Thank you for letting me share. And I hope that there was at least some little thought that you can take with you today.